Yo, what's going on guys? Bip here from Artifact. We are going to build in HyperFi. Okay, so I'm in a mental world with you guys right now. And then we'll, uh, we'll hop right into it. Let's just set this to market. Gas is busy. Two dollars? No way. So much better than before. I remember paying like $80 gas fees. Anyway, I just went to the world. I needed a new world anyway to do a demo like this. Uh, yeah. So the mint page is on the home page. You don't have to mint if you have a friend that has a world. Then they can just share the world. You can collab build together. It's just super cool that you can have as many builders as you want in the same place. And then uh, let's go view worlds. It minted the new world. This one, 1589. And we'll click on it. And boom, we're in. This is a new world. It is currently set to private by default. So no one can uh, hop in, right? So this is the basic settings you have. So this is your voice chat down here. So if you turn this on, we can talk out loud to other people and we can hear other people too. Give you a little bag here, which checks um, your wallet for items. I have nothing in mine. This is uh, my avatar. Right now I'm using Z's avatar. And this, you can change it to, uh, if your NFT has a VRM in the metadata, it'll show up, which is super cool. Or you can just load any VRM file or a direct link to a VRM file, which is super cool. And then your name. And then this right here is what only the admins and the builders and the editors of a HyperFi space can see. The hotkey for this is tab, so you can very quickly get to like this admin panel, which shows you your apps. And the world settings, which is like, let's name the world, description, the link, etc. right? And then finally, you have this little sidebar here, which just shows the people in the room. Um, this is your first and third. The shortcut key for that is also the scroll wheel. If I scroll, I go first and third. Then let's go back. This avatar visibility, this is based on how well the models are made. Okay, so if you lag a lot... You can turn this up to like great or perfect models, um, but you might not see the models. If you see little white triangle looking guys running around, that's because the avatars are like good or heavy, right? So if I go heavy, you can see this avatar is a heavy model. But if I switch this to like good, now I'm a white triangle guy because because my character is a heavy model, it's not going to work. So instead, you see this little guy, but this will make your game session a lot better. You won't lag as much in the event that you're lagging, right? And then your controls, this is the basic controls, and it does support mobile and VR, but desktop is pretty much where it's at because people like to build really complicated worlds that do super cool things, but they end up not working super well for mobile or VR. The options are there for those who make worlds that are designed for mobile and VR, right? Okay. So, now let's hop into the fun stuff. Let's get started on the apps. By default, it comes in with effects, which is your flying, climbing, and gliding. This is uh, just uh, collision effects, basically. If you're near like the edge of an object, it'll climb it. You can also fly by double tapping and then holding the second double tap of space. So, this is what I mean. Space is jump. By double tap space, he'll kind of float. But if I double tap and hold space, He'll float up. Okay, perfect. Then you have your spawn. That's this point here on the ground. And this is the direction he'll spawn in. And then you can adjust all the settings here of the, its position. Or you can just drag it on the screen, which is super cool. Like this. And I'm going to reset this back to zero. And that's pretty much it. The grid is an object. Okay, so you can see this when people load into the world. When you press tab and you enter this normal view, this is exactly what your world will look at, look like, right? When you go into editor mode, this is uh, only what admins and editors and builders can see. Okay, cool. Now let's build some stuff. Okay, so first thing, if you hit add, you're going to see a bunch of things here. These are a bunch of little apps and they constantly add new apps for you to adjust and play with, which is super cool. And you also have wallet. So this could be things in your wallet, your NFTs and stuff that you can quickly just, you know, click on and put in the scene and then, you know, do stuff like height, 
height 5, and it'll automatically resize to 5, which is super cool. And then uploads. This is if you are a developer, you can build apps, upload them, and then put them in your Hyperfy world. So your custom built apps can be added if you're a developer. It's super cool. It's on hyperfy.io and their docs section. Anyway, store. Let's get through all of these apps. We're going to do all of them. This is the all-in-one as of uh, whatever today is, end of March. Right, so screen. Screen is pretty cool. Screen, it's just a screen that kind of sits here. And you can set this up anywhere in your world. Of course, you have position and rotation, so you can place it however you want to. Label, this is uh, this is so you can know what screen this is. So say this screen you would place in the living room, you would call it maybe a living room screen. Maybe the living room screen is this big, right? And it's like that. And then thumbnail, this would be if you want to put a picture over it so it's not black. Um, let me see if I can get an image of something real quick. Grab this, let's just go over here. Oh, it's so. So you can see I can load an image onto this screen so that when I'm not using the screen, a picture is displayed here instead. And it just uploads to this and it saves there forever, which is super, super sick. It just saves here, right? And then this is a uh, little details, like say I want a width frame and we keep a one depth and a color. This is a hex, so look like this. Now I have a frame around here. Maybe the, that frame is too thick. We put point of I put a little frame around it. Right, and depth is how thick you want your screen to be. Otherwise, just zero everything out or delete everything like this. Um, to skip how I'm doing that, I'm pressing tab and just skips to the next box. Volume, this will be your the volume of whatever you're putting on the screen. And spatial is how close you are. It should give you a distance and proximity. That's about these squares, okay? So if you have the grid, you can identify the distance based on these squares. So 10 would be like 10 squares away, you can hear it. And then roll off is like, it fades away as you run away. It's super cool. And it also does like left ear, right ear, which is super cool. Like if I stand like this, the audio will come out of the left speaker versus if I stand like this, right speaker. Super cool. But most people don't, you just leave it on, right? Unless you're trying to put multiple audios into the room. Okay. So once your screen is here, if you are a builder or an editor or anything like that, anything but a normal player, you will now have a new icon at the bottom here. And it's going to let you share your screen to the living room. So I have all these screens up right now. Let's go and just do this interdimensional forever loop. So I am screen sharing this screen onto the screen. So you can do like a calls, like a screen share presentation call in your room with the screen. It's super cool. And then everyone can see, everyone in the room will be able to see what you're screen sharing. And it's pretty much live. Super cool little feature here. I'm going to stop sharing and go back to the picture. Awesome. Okay, next. I'm going to click this. Oh, tab to edit. Click on this. And I'm going to hit backspace to delete. Cool. That's your screen. That's pretty much everything you can do with your screen. The image is much, much, much simpler. Uh, let's just put an image in here. And then you have height and width functions. That's pretty self-explanatory. Lit is, uh, it just kind of adds like an emission to it. And double-sided is the backs are transparent, right? Versus not. Cool. And then you have another frame thing here. And then you have this first thing you've never probably seen in here called triggers. And I'll get into triggers later, but triggers are a really fun way to interact with what you're building. Let's quickly go to model. Actually, I need to get a model. Let me just grab something real quick. Okay, so I loaded up Sketchfab. What we're going to do is we're going to... Find the 3D model, okay? So if you click on search on Sketchfab, you might need an account. It's free, don't worry. Select downloadable right here. And we're gonna search for a city of some sort. So I'm gonna do like low poly city because the more simple an object is, the better for this example. And you can experiment with whatever you wanna do. Let's see. Let's find something that I think would be cool. Maybe this city park at sunset. Okay. Yep. Yeah. We'll go with this. Shout out to you. Download, download, download 3D model. And what we need is this GLB file. Okay. So hit download right here. And I'm just going to save it into the scene. Okay. Hit save. 
and then it's going to save right here and we're going to go back into hyperfy all right now all you have to do is take the glb file and drag it into the scene okay and then it's going to load and at this point you're going to notice you can run through your object okay you might not want to run through your object so all you have to do now is it's going to pull up this panel so if i go back here you can see out the model this is the 3d model we just loaded in i'm going to double tap space to fly i'm going to turn collisions to yes okay and then now when i double tap and let go of space i have collision detection it's based on the mesh of each object in the scene i'm going to press tab now to escape and you can see now we're working with this city park at sunset model into the world and everyone who loads into your world We'll see this. It is that easy. It's really, really cool, actually. And that's it. That's your that's your model function. The rest of the functions, uh, triggers, we'll cover later. If your scene has animations, you can disable or enable them. And then if you feel like the world is too big, which this one actually came out pretty good. Maybe that bench is a little too big. I'm going to push this down to like 0.9, maybe. That seems a little better. Yeah, that works pretty well. And then that's it. You can just set up your world however you see fit. I usually like to zero the world out and then zero these out too. Just so I know everything is straight and aligned with the grid. Oops. Zero enter. And yeah, that's your model all set up. Okay, so from here, let's add another app. Let's go and let's work with web. Web is an interesting one. I'm going to go and set that up for you guys really quickly. Okay, I'm back. We're going to do web now. Web. Hit the web app. It's very similar to screen. So let's just find a cool place to put this. Where would we want this? Maybe a little bit in this park area over here. So I'm just going to navigate this with you guys. Like as if I was building a world. Okay. Maybe we want this screen here. Maybe we want to adjust the rotation. So I just switch to this rotator here. And then it gives you these bars to rotate around. Maybe the screen's too small. Maybe I want to do... Um, so most screens are based off a of 16 by 9, if you don't know. So yeah, so a 16 by 9, which would be huge like this. So you could also do the math here. That's also an 8 by 4.5, right? So this is a, a typical HD screen. And yeah, let's just say I have a screen in the park like this, kind of floating futuristically. URL. So this is how you get URLs that work. I'm going to use YouTube for this example, but you can actually put almost any web link in here as long as the website doesn't reject third-party websites like this one. Okay, so you have to do a little experiment and testing to find what exactly works for you. But I have a YouTube link pulled up here. So this link right here will not work. However, the way you can get it to work is you go to share, you go to embed, and this will pop up. We need this link right here. Okay. It's youtube.com slash embed and then the code for the URL. Copy this. I'm going to go back to Hyperfy. I'm going to paste this in here and hope it's not too loud. Get ready. Okay. It did an autoplay. Awesome. So now I have this YouTube video up here. And if I click on this screen and I hit play, it might make some sound. All right, cool. Now it's the YouTube video playing, and then this will just play here. Yeah. All right, that's enough of that. Okay. So that is web. That's how web works. Any link that allows third parties in will load. And then factor is like your scale. So uh, if I go 100, you'll see. It's it's like more, less lower quality. And then if I go like 500, it's like, uh, you just adjust the scale based on your website that loads in so it gives you a little bit of um resolution to adjust live okay and then you also have visibility so let's say you don't want it to play immediately you can have it play on click and then put an image here just like the screen did and then you can give it a hint so this would be like play and then watch if i go up to the screen it'll give you a, an indicator on your screen that says play because i wrote play and then you could also do proximity. So I want it to play when I get to a certain range. Same thing. Yeah. So real fun creative tools for you to use to adjust your web um, application. All right. And then we'll get into audio. Add audio. You'll see a block. 
This doesn't matter where it is unless you care about spatial, which is like uh, the location, meaning your left ear, right ear. I showed you this on screen earlier and also distance and roll off. If you care about this, you need to place it in a certain location. If you don't and you leave spatial as off, it doesn't matter because if you're not an editor, you can't see it. So don't worry about the location so much. You just need to get either a direct link, meaning a link that ends with .mp3, or a file to upload of the audio you want. I'm not going to show you how to get audio, right? But if you use Google, you can get audio off of places like YouTube. It's very easy to figure out, okay? Anyway, file, none. Click on this. I have a park sound. If I hit play, let's see if that'll pick up. I'll turn this on real quick over here. You guys can hear that? Yeah, so I got a little park sound. It's kind of loud in my opinion. So I'm going to put this on point one. So it's a little more mild. And then the user can adjust their own computer volume to hear it as they wish. I'm going to keep this on loop so it plays forever and autoplay so when they enter the room it plays immediately. And then that's pretty much it. You have signals. This works with triggers. Don't worry about this. When we get to triggers, all these signals and triggers will make sense. But that's it for audio. It's pretty simple. Now you have little background effects for your scene. I'm going to hit save. And that's it. Your audio is complete. Okay, now let's move on to... Video! Awesome. Okay, let's add a video. So, go to add, go to video, click on a video. It's going to be just like screen and web. It's a little uh, movable, looks like a board here. Everything here is pretty much the same. Nothing new compared to screen and web that you haven't seen already. Frames the same, audio is the same. Signals and triggers we're going to talk about later. So, you have the option to choose a direct link, meaning a link that ends with .mp4 or .m3u8. A YouTube link is not a direct link. Or a file, right? So I'm going to go with file for this example. We're going to click on file. I'm going to load up this intro. I'm going to open and close this real quick so you can see. You might have seen it for a second. It said uploading. Depending on the size of your video, it won't show up immediately until it completes uploading. And then once it is done, you have your video here. And then you can just hit play. You can set it to autoplay, whatever you want to do. And it'll play your little video that you added to the scene. Then you stop, play. Just like that. And that's it. Video is pretty simple. I'm going to delete the video. And we're going to go on to text. All right, text. So I'm going to add a text to the scene. So text, just like everything else, can be moved around however you want to move it around. You have your text, what you're going to write in here. So... This is example, yeah. Okay. And then you have your size. So let's say one. We're going to go with one. Oop, I zoomed in on exit. This is example. Color is a hex. So um, FFF is white. You can just Google hex colors and then you'll see all the different types of colors. Alignment. This is your left, center, right. It's kind of like anything you've ever done ever of how it aligns text. Line height. This one's kind of interesting. The only way I've found to make this work is spaces, okay? So, like, if I continue to type, you can see it's a long lock, right? It just keeps going. But, and if I hold space until it hits the new line, okay, right around here, right? Okay, I'm going to put spaces between this thing until it breaks to the new line. There we go. So right around here. Now, now I have a new line. And I'm going to put more spaces. I'm going to put a character there just so I can do the LAC. Cool. New line again. There might be a better way to do it, but this way it does work. And this is your line height, right? So if I go one, they're tighter, 0.75, it's even closer. And there you go. Now you have text with multiple lines. Your anchor X and Y. This is just uh, the, where the point is anchored, right? Center. Uh, same for your top middles. This is all pretty self-explanatory. Max width. 
is uh, this can help you adjust the text, right? And then background color is uh, another hex code. So let's say zero, zero is black. Radius, I want it to have a bubble radius, so I can't see anything with that. So I can have round bubbles like this, and maybe one on the padding as well. So it's a big, big thing like this. Now you can create these cool little text signs. And that's your text. And then you have triggers on the bottom, and we're going to go over triggers later. Yeah, that's your text portion. It's kind of cool. Uh-huh. And the delete. Spawn. Spawn is one of the default things. So I've put the spawn over here. I thought it just made sense. And if I put spawn, I can have another spawn point. And that's pretty much it. Effects is also what I showed you earlier. That's the flying. Right? And then if you add two effects to the scene, uh, they just override each other. So there's no point. You only need one. And that is it for your basic apps. Now we're going to jump into tools. Okay, tools are pretty cool. Let's say you have a model that has a second story. This one doesn't, but let's say you do... And we want to get to that second story. And you don't want to let people have the ability to fly. You can use something like a platform. And this platform will have some basic functions. You can replace this platform with a model of something else, which is really cool. So it looks really custom. Scale would be in size, of course. So if I just double the scale, you can see it has this 2. Let's say you want it to travel higher. You can go like 10. And now the travel... Oh, this is the travel speed, sorry. This travel speed will just slow the elevator down dramatically. And then quad in and out is kind of like a, like a pausing at the ends like this versus linear is just never going to stop. So as soon as it touches, it'll just bounce right back up, right? And then you can have like a pause at the end. So it gives you one second to get on, then it leaves again, which is kind of like a makeshift quad, but that's fine. Uh, whoops. Upset. You don't really need to know. Start position is where it's starting from. And then uh, end position, I believe Y is our up to let's say about 10 yeah so y is our up in this example oh so i have it starting at a uh 0 10 0 so if i want to start to 0 0 0 that'll keep it lower and i'm gonna end at 10 instead of 2 so now it's going to travel really really high as an elevator let me just get on that yeah Yep, yeah, and now you have a working elevator. That's pretty much it. And if I give this a rotation 90, it'll spin. So now you can do like a little spiral um, up to 90 effect. And like lock in at a different area. So you can do all these cool, clever things with the platform as well as change the platform model out for something else, which is really cool. So you can do custom elevators. So yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. There's no fall damage. Okay. So I'm going to delete this elevator that's just kind of doing things that it shouldn't okay if you, if you don't want to click to delete things you can also just go platform delete i deleted with backspace okay seats we can make some seats real quick if i go into a seat something i want to put a seat on we can just lift this up move this here i'm actually going to make this a zero so the orientation feels a little better i'm going to put a seat maybe right around here i'm going to rotate this to the 90 perfect that was the right guess Put the edge of the seat kind of aligned right here, give or take. Make it clickable, and I'm going to call this bench seat. Awesome. And then, let's say you want to make another seat next to it. Actually, let me show you how it works first. So, I have a seat now. If I look at the seat, it says sit, and if I sit, I am sitting. Yeah. Okay, now let's say you want to do another seat. Instead of making a seat again... You actually have the ability to do control or command if you're on Mac. C and then B. And now if I drag this over, there's a second one. So you don't have to code it into you don't have to code this in every single time. You can just copy and paste. And that works for everything, by the way. Everything can just be copy pasted to make a second one. Which is super nice. Now I have two little bench seats right here. So then I could go around the stain. Like if it's seats everywhere that I want people to sit, now they have little interactions that they can uh, interact with, right? And you can see here, the apps for my two seats are right here. Now we'll hit add. Grabbables. Okay, let me come right back. I'm going to make a grabbable for you to see. Okay, cool. I went to Sketchfab. I got a stick. Shout out. I got a stick. I think it's funny. 
I have the stick downloaded as GLB, just like how I showed you earlier with how we got this model into the scene. Next step, if we put a grabbable into the scene and we hit model and we choose the stick, you're going to be like, whoa, this stick is too huge. Okay, at the time of this video, there's not a scale in here. So you need to manually scale it. Unless they add a scale, then you don't need to do this in the future. Okay, so I'm going to delete the stick. I'm going to open up Blender. I'm going to do this all with you. I'm going to delete everything in the scene. I'm going to go File, Import, GLB, Stylize Stick, Open, Import. This is my stick. It is Material Preview, just so we can see the stickiness of the stick. I'm going to hit this little side tab. I'm going to go to Scale, probably 0 0.05. It's probably really small. Is that what it should be? Now file export as GLTF. I'm going to put it in the same place as the stick. Call it the same thing so it overwrites the stick. Go back out here. Put grabbable. Go model. Stick. Stick is better size. That is much better. Um, it's kind of like a staff, but we'll work with that. Okay. Now let's say this is a right hand stick. We'll call the label of this stick. Awesome. Now let's test out the stick. If I were to go and be a normal person and look at the stick and I hit grab, now I have the stick kind of in my hands. So now we go to grabbable and we adjust the position and rotation here. Acceptable. One, one, one. Acceptable. Awkward, but acceptable. So you can kind of see how you can take any model and adjust its position and scale in Blender until you get something that seems like a grabbable. And then you can just left click on the ground to put it down, left click on it again to pick it up. Now you have a grabbable. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. I'm just going to continue to carry my stick. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add avatars. All right. So avatar spawns are this guy. So this is your default avatar. I'm using Z's avatar as I mentioned earlier. Any VRM file you have, you can just link it here and it will load right here. Okay. And then if I click on this, I'm going to go look for VRM real quick. Okay. I found a VRM in my downloads folder here. So I'm going to click on this, open this up, and you can see there I am. I have a VRM of my avatar just sitting there. It needs to be cleaned up. You can kind of see uh, I didn't do the clipping yet. And then if you walk up to it, you can equip it, and it'll show you all its stats, and you can put it on or try it on, and that's pretty much it. You can put avatars in your scene for other people to equip and use. And then if you don't like it, you just delete it. You can also put this as an image so you can put an image here so you can have an image on the wall instead and when the user comes up to the image they can equip your avatar just to make it things a little bit lighter right and then this is all your image settings like a normal image has and that's pretty much it for your avatar you also have a camera okay camera very very cool cameras are hotkeys Okay, so I want to rename this to camera one, for example, and I'm going to place the camera right here and maybe I'll give it a little bit of rotation. So it's looking like this and like this and I'll stand in front of the camera. Okay, so right now we're looking through this camera of the character. But if I activate the camera using shift one, because that's what it said is the key bind. I am now looking through the camera. I can still navigate and use my character and look around, but my view is stuck in the perspective from the camera. If I hit shift one again, I escape from the camera. If I click on the camera, I press copy and paste with control C and V. I can set up a second camera and the second camera will be shift two and I'm going to name it camera two. Now I'm clicking on camera one, camera one, shift one, camera two, shift two. Get out of edit mode, camera one with shift one, camera two with shift two. This you can use for like podcast style or for 
recording things on multiple screens at the same time, right? Super really cool idea to implement cameras that can be hotkey activated at any time. It signals this will be related to triggers. Some more things that you can do with triggers once we get to the triggers portion. Okay, so I'm going to delete the cameras from the scene. So we don't need them. I'm going to hit add. And now zoning. Whew. Zoning is the thing that you've all been waiting for, kind of. Okay, zoning is directly related to triggers. If I put a zone in here, you might be like, what the heck is this? Okay, this zone zones off an area. And you can set the dimensions of this zone any way you want to. I'm going to hit this on zero just so it's facing the right way. And then let's say, uh, I should just put this back on zero so it's even. And this is the size, let's go with the five by five square like this. Let's say I want to look through this camera when my character enters this zone, okay? So this, I'm gonna call this camera A, so you know it has a custom name. On enter of the zone, I want to Camera A, activate. Okay, this is what triggers do. So now when someone comes in and they walk into the zone, it activates the camera. But now they're stuck in the camera view. So you can add more triggers. You can also do on leave, camera A, deactivate. So now if I enter the box, I am in this camera view. If I leave the box, I am back into free camera. But you can do anything with this. There's also a teleport feature here. So I'm going to skip to place real quick. Place is what I was talking about when I said teleport is in the zone, but doesn't give you an option. Okay, so I'm going to type grass and give this a name grass. And then I'm going to give zone here a teleport function to grass. And that's that point right here. So now when I walk into the zone, I appear in the grass. Just so I could cover what that teleport section was. And then one more trick I'm going to add into zone that I think is really important is let's say you have an edge of the map like this and you don't want the user to be able to walk outside of the map like this. So let's say I make this a uh, 25. Oh, wrong direction. Put this back as 5, 25 on the X. So it's really long like this. And then let's make it tall, so 10. So now if the user tries to leave the park, for example, and I can make that a little closer to the edge. The user tries to leave this park. It will put them back in the grass. And I can have this point here be the same location as my spawn point here. I'm just makeshifting, putting this in really quickly. I'm not trying to be super accurate. But now if the user was like, I'm going to go run over there. No, you're not. You're going to stay in the area, right? So that's how you can use the zoning with the placement to pair it off and make your your boundaries of your map in a way. You can just zone off all the areas where people shouldn't be and then put them back into your map. Okay. Okay, guys, for this one, we're going to do receiver. I'm going to show you how the receiver works. So I have the OpenSea contract up here. So from here, you would go to like Etherscan using this little icon right here. And then you need this token address. Okay, this is going to seem complicated but it's not. I'm just going to copy this right here from the link. Go back to Hyperfy. I'm using my clone X for this example. Add receiver contract. Click on this. Paste this in here. Paste the address of what we just copied in here. You can leave this on infinity. It doesn't matter. ERC721. This is a 721 contract. If the tokens are all individual, like uh, PFP collections, it's a 721. If they're stacked on each other, it's a 1155, right? That's the quick, dirty way of explaining that. Like a loot pod or a space pod is 1155. They're all stacked on the same NFT token, right? Okay, cool. So once this is set up, that's it. That's all you have to do. You're going to notice here, now your bag that I showed you earlier works. It shows my clone X that I own in this wallet that I'm logged into here. But if I click on this, you're going to notice, hey, nothing happens. That's because this is an interactable based on your receiver. So if I put a trigger here, it'll do something. So if I say 
on trigger, teleport me to... Okay, I need to put a place real quick. Let me just go back, go add, go place. Just put this over here, for example. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Go back, place, lift this up. Okay, let's just put this up here so you can see the dramatic change. And this is going to be Clone X VIP. So it's kind of like token gating an area. Because you can make an area that only Clone X's could get to based on what PFP they have. You know what I mean? Okay. So now, if I go back into Edit and I go to Receiver and I set Teleport to Clone X VIP Place, which is this, and then I exit this menu and I go to my bag, if I click on my Clone X, I teleport. Right? So now you can use the receiver to show NFTs you own to do triggers. And the triggers can be anything that you can think of creatively that'll work, right? So for this example, I just use the teleport function to teleport me to here. So if I set up my map where there's an area where only clones can get to using the receiver, boom, I have a private area that's NFT token gated, right? So that's such, such a super cool concept. Okay, now we're going to do the Discord app. This app is so much easier than you think. We're going to go add. We're going to go down to Discord, right? From here, this application doesn't actually do anything inside this world. It does stuff on top of your Discord server. If you don't have a Discord server, it does nothing for you, really. This is for uh, those of you who have Discord servers. So what you need to do is you need to go to Discord, open up your server, go to Clone Tools, or mine is Clone Tools, go to whatever your name is, go to Server Settings, and then go to integrations, create a webhook, and then click on it, name it whatever you want, click a channel, click whatever channel you want, hit save, copy the webhook URL, okay? Go back to Hyperfy, click on your Discord app, webhook, paste in this webhook, and you're done. That's pretty much it. So now, when people say, yo, what's up? Then this chat is saved into your Discord bot right here. So this is my test earlier. This is the one we just typed just now. And that's pretty much it. That's your uh, Discord app. And then whatever clever webhook things you can figure out, you can probably do more with. But that's an easy example of how it records the chat logs into your Discord. Okay, now we're gonna do time trial. Time trial is a uh, multiple stages kind of. So I'm gonna put this time trial icon. I'm gonna put it here, kind of central of the world. Let's get it above the fox head. That seems appropriate. Just for this example, let's go like this maybe. Uh, this works similar to text. Everything is similar to text. The label, the message, the color. It's and then this is a. Uh, it shows you the name of the user and the time. It's pretty self-explanatory. It. This is not the hardest thing that I've shown so far. You know what I mean? This is very much based like everything else. So we're gonna put this time trial. We're gonna put this time trial right here in the center and then we're gonna add some things to it so it's usable. So let's say we add a zone and this zone's gonna be here. And let's make the X on this zone 10. And then this will be the starting line and we'll make this zero. So let's say you started here and this is the starting line. And then I'm gonna copy paste this zone, put a second zone here. Okay, on the second zone, first zone, second zone, time trial. First zone, I want to add a trigger, enter, begin time trial, time trial begin, second zone, on enter, time trial, end. Okay, so now it's a race. If I run, time trial begins, ends, time 2.19 seconds. Okay, so you see how you can create these little races by setting up zones and time trials to see who's first or what time they got. And it says right here, I finished in 2.91 seconds and 2.92 seconds. This is so you can simulate like race type environments in games or time trial completions of your worlds to kind of gamify them in a way. Okay, now we're going to go over some of the more complicated ones, the Mint and the Pay. So these are two more apps called Pay and Minter. So pay is the simple one. Pay is basically put an address in there. So if I click on my MetaMask and I'm clapping my address and I paste this in here and I say, give me one ETH. 
And then this is like the text label for it. And then I can do a trigger if someone does pay. What this will do is when a user comes up to my wallet and they look at it and they hit pay, it said, yep, yeah, it's gonna try to make a payment because I have enough funds to pay the person, okay? The mint function is a little more complicated. I have the page set up so you can see. So if I go to the mint app, it's gonna ask you for a lot more things. This is really more for developers, but you can just do this to anyone's contract if you really want to like support a group, right? So I'm gonna show you how to set this up. For Mint, what we need to do is we need to go to OpenSea is probably the easiest way. I'm gonna use HyperFi for this example since we're featuring HyperFi. We need to go to Etherscan and it'll pull up um, this page right here. This is the contract address, okay? So if I click on this contract address and go back to the world, I can paste in the contract address here, okay? That's the first step. And then we also need the function, ABI if there's proxy. So you can put the ABI if you want to or not. Token ID and price. So this is for developers. This is not really for um, the average user is just trying to make a game, you know what I mean? So if I go to contract in here now, and I hit control F and I type the word mint because most people call their mint function mint. And I keep going through here. I find name mint. There is a mint name. So the function is called mint here. Okay. So I'm going to go back to hyperfy, go to function, type the word mint in because we want to call the mint function. Okay. ABI. If you want to put ABI, this is it right here. Contract ABI. So if it doesn't work, Copy this, put it in there. If it does work, you don't need it, okay? Token ID, this is 1155s only because HyperFi creates individual worlds. HyperFi is a 721, okay? If it was one NFT, like a space pod or a loot pod where it's just one OpenSea page and then there's a bunch of tokens within that one NFT, that's 1155. Okay, price, you just wanna match the price of the mint. So it's 0.09 for this one. So now if I exit this view and I hit on the mint word, it should say minting and give me a contract to sign to mint on hyperfi.io. Okay. Okay. The last thing stream, the stream app is for streamers. If you're not a streamer, this is not for you. Use the video, use the screen, use the other stuff. This is for those of you who use like OBS and you stream, right? Oh, I just got a M3U8 URL from Google, right? So if I paste this M3U8 URL I found on online and I hit enter, it should just load. So I don't know what the heck this is, but it loads. So your M3U8 screen URLs, this is uh, how you can live stream to your HyperFi world built in. Everything else is pretty standard. You got your frames like I showed you before. You got audio like I showed you before. Thumbnail and roll off. It's all things you haven't seen before already. Stream URL is the only big change. That way you can do live streaming in your world for everyone to see at the same time as you, which is super, super cool. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this. Delete the stream app. Now we are on the environment. The environment, we're gonna finish this up with the rest of it because the rest is super quick, super simple. All the tools are probably the hardest parts. The environments are just fun things to add into the scene. Okay. Let's start with add light. Light is a light. It adds light to your world, which is really cool. You can strategically, you know, place this up around your world. You can see it does affect your BRM. You have the color by hex. So I go zero, 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 it should be black, so no light. Right, FFF is white. Intensity, obviously, is how bright you want it. Whoa, distance, you can have a roll off here. So like, uh, I only want to work this far or this far or this far, right? And then decay is like kind of how it fades away, right, like that. So you can experiment with light settings. And there's, of course, area. So you have two different types of uh, pointing lights. It might uh, take a second to flip between. So you see this is a different style of light. The light itself is not visible in the world for normal users. Only you get to see the light. So yeah, it's cool that you have some live light settings you can add to your room. 
to set up whatever like maybe dark room type style stuff you want to do. Light is done. Emotes. Emotes does nothing, okay? There is nothing um, to activate or do with the emotes app. What it does is it allows users to do emotes. And to do an emote, you hit enter to type. And you type things it's like slash sit or slash dance or slash wave, right? So these are the types of emotes that are in HyperFi. You can go check out the HyperFi Discord where they post like all their updates and stuff and you can see what emotes are available, but those are the ones that are probably the most commonly used. Next, we're gonna get into Sky. Sky, essential feature. Everyone should put a sky in their scene because it makes the world look so much nicer. And you can kind of quickly get the color you're looking for. So I, I like cloudy. I think cloudy looks nice usually. Dust one looks nice too. But they have all these pre-built in um, lighting scenes. Let me just uh, go back to where's sky. Sky, and we'll then find I'll find one that fits this environment kind of well. I kind of dig this one. This one kind of matches my scene kind of nicely. HDR is oops. HDR is the light that comes off of the sky. Do you want it to affect the objects in the world? The answer is yes or no. Yes, we'll apply this lighting to the objects in the world. No, we'll not. It'll just put, no, we'll just put this scene around your world, but have no lighting effects. Most of the time it's yes, it just looks better. Same thing for background. Do you want the skybox, but just the lighting effect? You have that option as well with no, or you have both on with yes. Fog is if you have fog. Okay, so if I flip between these, it's not going to do anything because we didn't add fog. So we'll get to fog in a second. Next, we have water. Water is kind of a cool little one. It puts a little patch of water like this. I guess it's not so little on this map, right? It's kind of the whole world. So that's the width and the depth of your size of the water. So let's say we want a 10 by 10. Now we have a little square. Maybe I wanted to fill this pond up with water. That's actually kind of a hard shape to do because it gives you a square and this is not a square. Oh my gosh, how would I do that? I'm not, I'm not actually going to do it, but the way I would do it is I would probably set up a square here and then set up another square to cover this and another square. You, you see what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying. That's probably how I would solve this particular problem with five squares. And then you have the hex for your color. So you can switch this whatever color. So go Google the hex for water and uh, it'll just switch to whatever color that is. And then speed is how quickly it moves. So like 0.5 is like, whoa, crazy water. And the 0.05 is like kind of chill, really relaxed, right? Okay. And then distortion is the way it looks, right? So you can kind of get a different effect by just adjusting these numbers. Water, done. Fog, now it ties into the fog a little bit. We're gonna let the fog load. Okay. And we're gonna delete the water because we don't really need it. Go back, go to fog. So you can see the fog immediately kind of taking effect, right? So if I make this even stronger, uh, that sky, let's go back to fog. If I make this even stronger, it's 0 0.005 by default, okay? Let's go 10 times bigger and see how crazy that gets. 0 0.05 is 10 times more fog. Okay, so now you can create these really foggy environments so quickly. And if you adjust to linear, you can kind of see it. it it's like this distance modifier, which is kind of cool versus exponential, which is like the whole world, right? And then linear gives you this additional option of like, I want the fog to be like closer here, but also farther here, but maybe not so far. And then gives you more control in a way versus exponential, which is kind of just everywhere is the same, right? Anyway, moving on to sky. There you go. Now you see what I mean with fog and cover and reveal. It opens up this top area versus keeping it all covered like that, right? Which is cool. That's cool. It gives you that option to create a more immersive style world there. Grid, that's the default for earlier. You almost never keep grid unless you have a, I don't know, a Tron cyberpunk-esque vibe going on and you really like the grid. Then you have sun, which just adds light to the world and then you can control it. So your intensity, your direction, um, Guide is the way that the light is pointed at the moment. So you can see it's going this way. And then you have all the basic functions. You can adjust the direction just by messing with this. 
90s, like the other side, and you can see how the lighting changed immediately, right? You see the shadow there? The shadow there, right? So it's real-time shadows, which is really, really cool as well for these objects. And if you don't like the sun, you just get rid of the sun. It's a completely optional piece in the world. And simple terrain. Okay, so this is... I'm going to kind of go out here and I'm going to get rid of the fog so you can see. And let's go back to simple terrain. So you see how we have this grid here? If I put a simple terrain, it puts like this... This, uh field going on around here right and then kind of just surround this your area with this terrain it also went into my object a little bit so you have to adjust everything to kind of work with your terrain i would maybe start with terrain first if you're trying to go with terrain or you don't even use the terrain at all right and then you can adjust the position here too because you see how it's like in the ground and i don't want that so maybe i'll adjust the z to go up to one and then maybe now it's a little better now i have this desert vibe going on in my park right and then that was very very quick easy way to make um simple terrain you have other stuff you have an island you can have some island vibes or you can do the moon that's their default textures they kind of have built into here which is super super cool as an additional option portals portals are a fun uh easy thing to do you just type in a link so this could be anywhere which is really cool Including, uh, you can do lakes to other places, so you can do, like, a portal into, like, on cyber, which is a really cool idea. But anyway, I'm gonna go hyperfy.io slash clonex is the community space. So if I do that, you can see I now have a portal here to the clonex community space. If I just clicked on this, it would lead me to that world on hyperfy. I'm not gonna do it because, uh, we don't have time. Anyway. We're going to go now into mirror. Mirrors are cool. They're very fun. Okay. So I have a mirror here. There's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of self-explanatory stuff, though. You got your positions, which is your transforms is the correct way. Uh, width and height, also part of transforms. You have your buttons, right? So this is the side buttons over here for the user to interact with. I usually tear it off. Um, but you do have the option for people to have these buttons here on the mirror or next to the mirror in this scenario you can adjust the position of where those buttons are uh by default i think it's a good idea to have them on the side and then the scale of the button um yeah if that really matters i just turn them off and then your resolution which is like the quality uh the backdrop or everything i'll, sh I'll just give you an example so if i turn this on you can now see me in the mirror which is cool you have live mirrors but if you go to backdrop it removes the world and only shows your character, just probably to save uh, memory for the user experience, prevent lag. But everything just looks nicer. This is kind of like what you're going for when you have a mirror, right? And you also have the standard edition, which is like if I go like this, like this, it's it's not it's not loading in super clean, clear quality, just to save like memory, probably, right? So that's how that works. Usually, if you don't if you can disable the buttons, what I prefer to do is uh, I'll just do one of these. Right, I'll just put a zone in front of the mirror like this and go on enter mirror enable HD. Right, and then that way when the user goes in front of the mirror, I'm going to actually turn this off so you can see the example. When the user goes in front of the mirror, it turns on the mirror. Right, and then now you have a working mirror. If you're really trying to save space, you can go on leave mirror disable right and then now the mirror will appear and bang you have the working mirror versus no working mirror um i think the better trick would be if your mirror is around a corner the mirror is around a corner i'd probably put the zone here so imagine there's a wall where this character is standing and you're coming around the wall so you can't see the mirror yet you're like oh the mirror loads in right that just makes more sense in my opinion and then uh probably make this at six right and then get rid of this for this example i'm just giving you a full example say there's a wall right here and you're like what's over here and you walk through and then the mirror turns on right that's kind of what i would do to make it more seamless for the user and that's your mirror so i'm gonna get rid of this now and we'll go add go back to the bottom it comes default with this really cool interactable connect 4 game that you and your friends can play it's all live it's super cool 
get play, and then now yellow versus red, yellow, red, yellow, red, yellow. Right, and then all done. This is a fun little app game built in. And then Zesty. Zesty. Okay, the last thing, Zesty. Zesty is like an ad billboard market for metaverses. It's kind of cool. It's, I think it's kind of like a more upcoming experimental project. I don't know how permanent this is going to be, but it's a cool concept, right? So the Zesty platform is basically billboards that pay you. So you have to like get a contract. So if you get a contract with a person, they'll pay you to have you put your billboard in your places, right? So if you have a popular place, you might get paid. For having their billboards in your popular place. You know what I mean? It's like a it's selling ad space in a way, which is a clever little idea. Right. So instead of this, you would have whatever ad they give you through whatever link they give you to put in here. So that that will come out of Zesty. I don't have an active contract, so I can't like show you that, but this is kind of how it would look, where you would have their ad inside of your space that has analytics for them right so you don't have to do anything you just put their link in and it automatically puts whatever ad space they're putting on meaning like their image or video whatever it is that they're playing into your ad automatically so you don't have to like take the image and upload it in and use an honor system right whatever it's like this is it's built in for you it's kind of cool Right, and then that's pretty much it. And it's just a network. And then all of this, you would just kind of configure based on the contract that you sign with the person. Um, they would probably have recommendations for how you set it up. And then you would set it up. And you would just leave it there for however long you have with contract with that person. It's a cool little idea. I don't know how often it's going to be used, but it's cool that it's there to experiment with in the... Whoa! All right, guys, you made it. That is every single HyperFi app. We covered all of them. There's nothing left as of the date of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Go to the HyperFi. Go make some cool worlds. Go share them. Put them on Twitter. Put them in group chats. Let's all hang out together. Make your clone into VRM with a new plugin and clone converter. And let's all hang out in HyperFi. It's super cool. It's super fun. All right. I'll catch you guys over there.